In this video, I'll teach you everything that you need to know about how to buy a car in your business's name. As a business owner, you probably already know that this is a possibility, but there is a right way and wrong way to do this. You need to figure out whether or not buying makes sense or leasing is more beneficial, taxes, and most of all, how to get approved for financing. What's up winners, my name is Nam. If you're new here, welcome. Here we talk all things personal finance and credit. Start now by subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. When you buy a car for your business, you can do it in your business's name or you can buy it directly for yourself. Both are perfectly feasible ways of doing things, but I'm about to show with you that there are some good reasons to do things in your business's name. We're about to go through the process step by step so you can understand how everything works. So before we even think about buying a car in your business's name, you're gonna need to first incorporate your business, meaning that your company has to be an LLC, LLP, or a corporation to start building business credit. So as a sole proprietor, there's no way to differentiate you from your business. You must file an article of organization directly with your state before you think about buying a car in your business. So once you have done that, now you need to obtain an employer identification number also known as an EIN number from the IRS. Unless your business is very new, you probably already have one. But on the off chance, if you don't have an EIN, there's easy ways to get it. You should never pay anyone to get an EIN number. This is a 100% free process. There are two routes that you can take. You can download the IRS form SS4 from the IRS website, fill it out and send it in. Or you can just file it online. The link will be down in the video description. Once you've gotten your EIN, you have to create a credit profile. To do this, you would want to contact Dunn and Bradstreet. This is a credit bureau that specifically tracks business credit and they're a little bit more hands-on compared to the consumer ones. You can actually create a profile on their website and even upload your financial statements. This can help you quickly build business credit, which is the first step of getting a loan. Dunn and Bradstreet require you to have at least three trade lines or credit lines in order to build a score. There are plenty of business trade lines out there that offer net 30 terms meaning that you would have to purchase supplies for your business and within 30 days, you promise to pay them back. Some of the easiest net 30 accounts to get are from Quill, Granger, and also Uline. All of these companies offer office and industrial supplies. So if you're any sort of business, most likely you will get some sort of value from any of these companies. Once you set up an account and start using them, they will report this information to Dun & Bradstreet, which will help you build your business credit. Another route that you can take is a low limit commercial card from retailers like Staples, Home Depot, or Walmart. Most major companies will report your payment information to DMB already, but it doesn't hurt just to make sure. Now you got some lines of credit, it's time to start building business credit. So to do this, all you have to do is establish a record of making timely payments. In fact, it can take as long as two years to get to the point where you qualify for a car loan if you only wanna use business credit. If you don't have two years to burn, then don't worry, you can still buy a car under your business's name. But during this time, it is important to make sure that all of your payments are on time or you won't be able to qualify for the highest score. Along the same lines, you will actually need to use your lines of credit in order to establish a track record. This puts you in a sweet spot where you are using your credit, but you're not at risk of hitting your limit. While you are building business credit, it does not hurt to clear up any outstanding debts on your business. If you have any liens, judgments against your business, get them paid off. As soon as those are paid, you'll quickly see a jump in your score. When you think you're ready, then go ahead and check your business credit score. The three major business credit bureaus are Equifax, Experian, and Dun & Bradstreet. Unlike personal credit scores, getting your business credit scores costs money. Equifax, they charge about $100, Experian charges around $40, and DB charges around $62. Business credit scores are also ranked on a different scale. For instance, Dun & Bradstreet, they use a paydex score, which is on a scale of zero to 100. Anything over 80 is considered good, and you should be able to qualify for a loan. If you don't yet qualify, then you don't necessarily have to wait until your business credit is fixed to get your car in your business's name. You will most likely need to be a personal guarantor for your business. On the other hand, requirements for a lease is much more relaxed and it is easier to qualify. Whether you are buying or leasing, the next step is to find a dealership with a commercial sales department. This isn't strictly necessary, but the specialists in these departments are experienced with the ins and outs of commercial sales. It is just easier to deal with an expert than to deal with someone who's only ever sold to individuals. Once you have a list of dealerships, the next step is to find the right vehicle for your needs. There are also tax benefits depending on the weight of the vehicle as well, so I'll go a little bit more in depth with this a little bit later in the video. But I'm pretty sure that you probably have already something in mind, just make sure that you're buying something that's appropriate for your business. If you're a construction company and you buy a Tesla, then there's gonna be some unwanted attention from the IRS. Remember, you should only buy a vehicle in your business's name if it's actually for your business. All right, so once you've found a car that you need, you're gonna need to obtain financing. In addition to your business credit score, most lenders are gonna to wanna to see more information about your business finances. Unless you are an established business, like two years or more, most likely they will check your own personal credit score. So just make sure that you have cleaned that up before you apply. 
Even if you are a one-man team, your business and yourself are separate from one another. Provided your dealership has a commercial sales department, you should be able to get financing through them. Alternatively, you can look at other sources of financing, whether it is a local bank or a credit union. In fact, it is a good idea to shop around at several different lenders to find the best rates. Dealership financing is convenient, but it is not always the best value. Some lenders may ask you to sign a guarantee for the loan. This means that you'll be held personally liable if your business fails to make its payments. For that reason, sometimes it just makes sense to pass up a loan with an ultra low interest rate, simply just avoid the risk of personal liability. If you're unable to get financing strictly through your business credit, you can always co-sign a loan with your own credit. It is kind of similar of getting a car for another person, whether it be a spouse or a child, and you just co-sign for that loan. This exactly is the same, but just with your business. So when this is the case, if you ever get into an accident, possibly your business and you can personally be liable in case you get sued. So this is not the end all of getting a vehicle under your business, but there are just more responsibility that comes along with it if you're tag along on that vehicle. Once you've gotten approved for your chosen lender, then you're ready to buy your vehicle. That's all there is to it. Well, not quite. After you've made that purchase, you would have to make regular payments just as you would on a personal vehicle. Remember, late payments will impact your credit score, not only for your business credit, but most likely your personal credit score will be affected as well if you are a co-signer. If this is a vehicle strictly for business use, just make sure that you always make payments from your business account and not your personal account. As always, it's never wise to mix business and personal assets. Another thing that you need to do is to immediately obtain insurance for that car or truck. Provided as a primary work vehicle, which it should be, you can even get a commercial auto policy. These plans provide higher levels of liability coverage than individual policies, although you may pay a higher rate. Registration gets a little bit hairy because the process does vary from state to state. In most cases, you will need to show your articles of incorporation or your company's equivalent. To find out what paperwork that you need, reach out to your state's DMV or BMV. When the vehicle is registered, it will need to be done by you or by someone else who is a manager at your business. As with your car payments and insurance, make sure that you pay any registration fees out of your business's account and at your personal account. Come tax time, you'll be able to claim the tax deduction for the cost of the vehicle. With that said, the rules are kind of complicated and they're gonna be different depending on the type of company that you run. This is where having a good account really comes in handy. One thing to remember is to keep a mileage journal if you're paying for gas out of your own pocket. You can claim a tax deduction for any miles that you drive on company business. So what are the advantages of buying a car in your business's name? To begin with, you're able to maintain a clear distinction between your business and personal assets. If you buy a business car or a truck in your own name, you're mingling these assets. As mentioned previously, you can be personally liable if you get into an accident while using it for business use. As for the tax savings, it does make it a lot simpler, but it doesn't really matter if you have a personal vehicle that you use for business or you just have a vehicle that's strictly for business use. If you have a car that's 50% business and 50% personal, then you can write off that portion that's used for business. The one thing that gets passed around a lot between influencers and content creators is a Section 179 equipment deduction. This allows you to write off 100% of your vehicle within the first year if the vehicle is heavier than 6,000 pounds and under 14,000 pounds. Normally with cars, you would depreciate the asset over five years. So depending on your business and your situation, you may wanna to talk to your accountant or tax strategist to make sure that it makes sense for your business. For vehicles that are under 6,000 pounds, there is a tax code that allows you to have bonus appreciation. You can deduct 18,100 within the first year with bonus appreciation, 16,000 for the second year, 9,600 for the third year, and every year after that, you can do $5,760. This is only if you use your car 100% for business. As a reminder, the IRS does love to audit business owners who ride off 100% of their vehicles, especially when it comes down to luxury vehicles. So just be aware of that. So anytime that you depreciate a vehicle under your business, if you decide to sell the car, there's something called a depreciation recapture which may cause you to pay capital gains tax, but this is outside the scope of this video, so just make sure you ask your CPA or tax specialist more about this. On the other hand, if you're leasing your vehicle, you can deduct up to 100% of that car payment depending on how much you use it for business. This means that you may not have to put any money down, spend only for what you use, and not take a loss when selling the car because you would just have to turn it in. Another important benefit is the higher insurance coverages available on commercial vehicles. The last thing that you wanna do is to get in a car accident and have someone sue you and watch your business go bankrupt. Bankrupt. With higher coverage, you're limiting your exposure to that risk. Additionally, if you are a co-signer on a business vehicle, your personal assets are liable rather than only your business, even if you have an LLC or a corporation. Even though I highly recommend buying your business vehicle in your business's name and not your personal name, there are still a couple of downsides. To begin with, the purchase process is a little bit more complicated. Even if you are an established business with good credit, it can take several days to complete the transaction. 
this can be problematic if you need to buy a vehicle immediately. Another downside that's with increased insurance coverage is that you also get higher premiums. This is annoying, but it's usually worth it in order to get better coverage. Now, we've only been talking about buying in your business's name, but what if you don't have enough business credit or you need to buy a vehicle right now? In that case, you might not have any other choice to buy a car in your own name. To begin with, this only works for passenger vehicles and light work vehicles. If a truck weighs more than 10,000 pounds, then you won't have any choice but to register it into your business's name. Buying a car normally is pretty straightforward. You just buy, register, and insure it the same way as you would your own personal vehicle. With that said, when you buy your insurance, you would have to indicate that it's being used for business purposes. In most cases, this means that you won't be covered for accidents that happen during work hours. There are a couple of advantages to buying a business vehicle in your own name. To begin with, the purchasing process is simple and straightforward, and you can get your vehicle on the road that same day. You also pay less for insurance than you would pay for a commercial policy. Even so, I really wouldn't recommend doing this unless you have no other option. First off, you are exposing yourself to a huge insurance risk if you are involved in an on-the-job accident. Even if your policy covers the accident, you will not be able to get the same coverage as you would with a commercial insurance policy. If that's not bad enough, your personal umbrella policy will cover you for the damage to that vehicle. Another major problem with buying your business car in your own name is that you're not separating business and personal assets. The liability issue is a good example of why this is a bad idea. With purely a personal vehicle, you're only exposing yourself to the risk. With a purely commercial vehicle, you're only risking your business. With a mixed-use vehicle that's registered in your name, both you and your business could be liable in event of an accident. Not only that, but if you change your mind later on and you want to register your vehicle under your business's name, the business will have to cut you a check and pay the sales tax on the transaction. And even if you set the price as low as a dollar, you would have to pay tax on the fair market value. So what did we learn today? As long as your business has good credit, buying a car in your business's name should be quick and painless. And if your credit isn't great, you can always consider a lease. But regardless of the method that you choose, if your personal credit is not that bad, then you can always be a co-signer for your business vehicle. If you want to know how to get the best deal on a lease, come hang out with me some more over here. I'll see you over there.